All right, welcome back. This is M-Dog, and we are continuing our <coughs> leveling progression strategy tips video series here. And uh, before we actually get started fishing, we're still at winding, obviously. Um, we're level 11. I mean, we're, we're now closing in on Old Berg at 12. Uh, but remember, we also have that new river coming out. And so before we get fishing here, let's talk a bit about uh the upcoming update we've about the time i left for vacation if you've been following my video series closely you'll know that uh, this is the first video we've done in around a week because i did leave for vacation about the time i left for vacation this was posted on the rf4 forum which is uh, actually very uh, applicable to anyone who's around the same level that my uh that my steam account is that we've been playing around with in these videos, but uh, they talk about the new uh, Belaya River. I'm, hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Um, two new species, which is the brown trout and the taimen. Taimen's gonna be a very aggressive predator fish that um, will be challenging apparently even to the higher level players based on your, your gear, it could be just about impossible if you hook into a really big one, but um, there's also some other interesting facts, though, in this update. They talk about how they have made it more attractive and enjoyable to spin fish. From the very beginning of the game, the player will receive a full spinning set and be able to progress through the game using this method, starting at the base water bottle body winding rivulet. That's where we're fishing now. And so according to this, it's saying where we are now is uh, going to be available starting at level one which is huge. So from the very beginning, you're gonna have a spinning set and you're gonna be able to fish at a body of water that rewards spin fishing. And so I think that's really great. Uh, I know a lot of players who struggled through the early level spin fishing at uh, Mosquito and even at Winding when, the, when, it, when it wasn't quite as uh, good, of, good of a body of water. So this also talks a little bit about how premium profiles, they've found another way to, re to reward premium profiles. You're going to have a, um, a bonus in your first hour of fishing each day that's going to give you more XP and better chances to level up skills. And then there's the fish. But just today, they've actually just um, placed another update on the website and this is the cool thing about this uh, uh update is just this this visual that they're adding some new uh onega rods and again i'm not sure about if i'm pronouncing that right but it says that they're um are made using natural materials and ethno style design is unique to the region where they're crafted uh, they're presented in telescopic match, bolo rod, spinning, and casting, as well as jerk rod. So it's, it's just, I love the idea that we're not only getting new reels, but new rods. Uh, it's pretty exciting. The other two pieces of information that they've now said, as you see today, this update that is posted on the forum, this to me says, we know you've been waiting a long time for the, the new river. And, you know, we know we were planning on giving it to you sooner and we've had to push it back for whatever reasons, maybe because of the problems they had with the Steam server overload or um, they just decided to go a different direction and delay it. But um, to me, this, this, this update on the forums today says, please be patient. Here's some more info to hold you over. So... Um, I, I'm not sure when the actual body of water is coming or, you know, how much other stuff will be with it. But, but I think they're trying to drip us a little bit more info to help us hold over. Tents will be able to use as storage for your items on any water body. If you've been around the game for a while, you've probably heard a lot of us talk about how this is just a no-brainer. We, we need to be able to access our storage no matter where we are. And not be faced, you know, forced to travel back and forth to the cottage pond. And then campfire. It's going to have extended functionality. You'll be able to warm up next to the fire, increase your comfort level. Now, that's cool. When I first part of playing, started playing this game many, many months ago, I was told that campfires increased your comfort. And then I quickly found that that doesn't seem to actually be the case. But apparently that now will be the case the other interesting piece is you have to buy firewood and matches at repair shop 
to even use the campfire. So you're going to want to sort of, uh, it, I mean, I, I'm, I'm guessing for a higher level player, firewood and matches are going to be next to nothing cost-wise. But um, as you use campfires, you're probably going to want to use them efficiently. In other words, you know what, let's go ahead and make all that tea and that coffee and our mulled wine. Uh, and let's do it during a storm so we can get a little comfort benefit just so that we're cutting down on the cost. Okay, that's enough of me talking. I just, there's been some, since I've been on last, there have been some pretty cool, the coolest part, of course, is seeing new species of fish, but pretty cool updates. Okay, let's get a little bit of fishing. This is going to be a really long video as I'm not necessarily um, wanting to level too much more or too aggressively past where we are now. Um, the only consideration is some people have asked hey could you take that account to oldberg so we can see how you would approach oldberg and yeah we might be able to do that at least a little bit we'll see we'll take it we're gonna chill um because the main thing i want to do to be completely honest is sort of hit level 12 and go to the new river when it comes out and just kind of see what it's like for a uh, a lower level player who maybe doesn't have the gear um for for some of the fish but you know just see what that's like especially with very little info that's going to be available there now uh let's get things ready here i think we actually want to go let's see so we have telescopic and um feeder feeder is that what we want to do here i know we want to put our feeders out so let's see what we're going to use it's getting pretty late, and so worms is not actually a bad idea. Let's start with um, let's start with worms. You know, I went on a uh, fishing trip lately uh, with with uh, my son and, and some some of my brother-in-laws, and uh, one of the interesting things was we were feeder fishing, but it was out in the ocean. But the uh, guide always had us line our our our. Um, you know, the loops on our rod, the eyes, uh, in the direction that the line was going. Uh, because the drag would give. So if a really big fish hit it, like there, if it was too big, instead of snapping the line, you know, he had the drag pretty low, it would pull out easier if it was pointed towards where the fish would be is, is located or something like that. Anyway, there was a reason. It was interesting because, you know, in this game, I'm often doing it to the side, thinking that that gives us more uh, more of an opportunity for the sensitivity of it to kick in. And maybe that's the case, but uh, it kind of made me rethink that. And I don't know how the game represents, you know, those mechanics of how that, how easy it is to pull the line out based on the angle of the pole, but that was interesting for me to think about. So anyway, um, all right, the question is, do we want to try to get a couple of cast in here spin fishing before before the sun goes down let's try that let's see what we even had on here did we have a leader at all we did not okay we'll, we'll, we'll live on the edge we'll live on the edge all right okay so uh in in my last video before we live on the edge real quick someone had asked hey can we see your setup and i and i told him yeah i'll show it in the next video and this is what the setup looks like we're using these small hooks right now because we're thinking that uh, it's possible that the rough are going to come out overnight here. But in terms of the rod and reel, I mean, this is just the very starter stuff. Like, this is a free-to-play account. I've got no, you know, silver, hardly. Just kind of grinding through it. And uh, this is cheap line, 3.9 line, a uh, cheap rod. And the only reason why it's 3.9 is that was all that was available in the store. So you just kind of, you kind of just early on here, I'm, what I'm finding is you just do what you can based on what's available and um, hope for the best. I do not recommend overloading. There's a rough. I do not recommend overloading this, uh, you know, early gear. The line is too strong, at least on that one. And I'll show you what the other one looks like here. This one's got 3.1. This is at least closer to a spark. But you definitely risk the health of your reel by putting line that's stronger. Thankfully, we do have um, a, a, the rod is stronger than both. So we're, we're at least at a healthy place there. All right, let's, um, yeah, let's cast at least one time here. We're gonna do what have we been doing? Like retrieval speed 18, basically. 
I think I have probably had the most consistent success doing the what is similar to a stop and go. We don't actually get the stop and go indicator, but and this is what I think it was Hogger had left this advice on one of the videos was at winding he tends to have he or she has the most success doing this sort of basically doing a stop and go with the with the lures it's getting pretty late for spin fishing um, there's some speed up what we need to do is try the darker the darker uh, dragonfly there but let's see what we have on first What size hook are we using over here? It's a nice silver there. Yeah, we've got a 15 hook on this one. Okay. I'd love to catch silver bream here. Markers like that. That was a nice fish. So it really messes me up. I don't typically do it this way. Usually I have... Um, usually I have the feeders on my one and two and then the spinning rod kind of on the third slot, but got it backwards right now. I'm not sure if that even went in the water. It's challenging enough spin fishing here, even during the day. I'm not sure this late at night we're going to do much. And we actually have gotten way more bites on spin fishing in the main river than we have in this little pond area. And I don't know if that's consistent all day or if it's just because of the times we've tried to fish over here. But that didn't used to be the case. I mean, everything used to not be as good as it is now. I feel like winding has gotten a boost. But... Um, I think in the past, fishing up here in the pond was as good as anywhere, but I think the river is really a lot healthier now, the actual river part. Okay, what is this? Chinese sleeper. Let's go ahead and recast this other one. It's just been kind of sitting out there, not catching anything. We also might try maggots on there. And we'll go ahead and go a little larger hook. I don't, I, I don't think there's tons of rough here, so we'll we'll broaden our broaden our chances a little bit here. And then on the other line, we will go with worms and a small hook. And I don't know. Let's try about 85 centimeters. Pretty much in the same spot. And now we wait. And now we wait. We had a uh, the rough order, one reason why I'm not going hard for the rough is the rough order only had a couple hours left and there wasn't another one. So unless one has reset now, we're probably not getting a rough order today anyway. And once we get, uh, you know, past this overnight session and it's early morning, what we may do is sort of cast our feeders one back over there near the lily pads and maybe even one across to the opposite shore we'll see the bite should really pick up uh once it's it's not so uh dark and late but i am kind of surprised we haven't gotten let's go more into this hole over here it's more like here huh 
you know, this used to be this used to be such a great spot, but it has been a long time. It is possible that um, there are just better places to fish in this pond right now. Let's try it down here a little bit. Try to keep an eye on our float. Oh yeah. Hopefully we get it in time here. That's some nice bite. Is that a sleeper? That's a big old sleeper. Big old sleeper. A little past the hole. All right. So we've got three out of five fish or markers. So we're making a little silver, getting a little experience. It'd be great if we could get uh, at least somewhat close to maybe a level 11 and a half on this video. We are at 16 minutes, so we'll go a little longer into the first part of the day at least and see how we do. Got some nibbling going on. Oh, it's a nice little fish on the earth on the worms here. A little crucian, nice little crucian. You catch a 300 gram crucian on these little starter rigs, feels like you're bringing in a world beater. Another silver, but a little small. Nothing on the float rod yet. Oh, there's a good nibble. Let's pick it up, see what happens here. Ooh, probably could have pulled it up there. Come on, buddy, you can take it. Nice, white bream. Gotta take her on the maggots. Another bream species. No, oh, sorry, it's a gibble. Starting to get a higher prevalent of non markers now.
you ever lo looking to um, get an early bump to your casting distance, personal casting distance record, this is a pretty good spot just because the elevation to do it from. It's really in either direction there. rods hmm interesting fish gibble big old gibble it's gibble time some food. give this telescopic rod a little bit longer. Some food and relocate to the main part of the river for the day. A little bit of day fishing. We'll take a chance on some bigger fish. Little sleeper. haven't been doing and we could have been well I guess we don't have any food so we would have drove our energy down pretty quick but some red worms where are we at on bottom fishing by the way we're not that far away from using a pattern oster rig which may be worth doing. There we go, we got a skill up point that time. Oh yeah, we've got to start using our uh, miracle bait. We need to make some more too. All right, let's get some bread and some pearl barley from the grocery store. What do we got, 103 silver. We needed one more Chinese sleeper. There's only three minutes remaining on that order. Okay. We had about 10 silver so far. We're definitely not uh, 
not doing anything very fast right now. All right, let's get some bread. A couple more packs of pearl barley that we can work on while we're out. start with the spot where the river and pond area meet over here and let's go ahead and switch to pearl barley and we'll increase the hook size a little bit fight some fight some undersized bream is probably what we'll do but you never know I was thinking about this and really if you're going to live on the edge in this spot, you probably sh should consider going up to a little larger hook. Um, let's do pearl barley. So we're kind of just throwing out. We don't want to go too far here. We'll try that. This has already got a 15. We'll put a 13 on that one. Normally, I would even use up to a size 8 to fish for bream, but I don't know. It's just so hard with these little rigs to get the bream in. And uh, try this for a minute. See how this looks. Floating down the river. Might get some bites. Not quick bites. Nothing quick there. we have a leader We've got that steel leader I don't think we're gonna get any bites with that big old steel leader but I could be wrong we can try I mean it certainly protects us from what happened with the pike last time but We lost our little mono leader, I guess. And we may have had the most bites with the mono leader on there. It might be worth putting that back on there. If we could get bites with this steel leader on, I would say it's worth it, but just not sure we can. You would think in this like dark, muddy river, especially with just sort of bringing a spinner bait through the water, that the little bit larger leader or steel leader wouldn't make that big of a difference. But I'm just, my experience has been that it has.
All right, let's see what we got here. It's going to be an undersized bream, isn't it? See what we get down in the four or five meter hole. As we talked about last, I think it was the last video we made, I just don't feel like it's very efficient to um, struggle with our gear against undersized bream. So if you don't know, this is the, one of the tents. That's going to be a storage spot soon, according to that update we read. All right, let's try this. We'll see what the bite's like. This is also more where we were getting some some regularity of uh, activity on the spinner baits. We'll see if that's still the case. Whoa, yeah, much better. That's nice. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. Little perch. There we go. What we need. We'll do a couple casts here and then we'll put that steel leader on, see see if we can get any bites with the steel leader on. I'm really curious. If that will kill the bites or if we'll still get some activity. Okay, steel leader. sort of just between cycles of rotations letting it fall into that the hole that we're fishing out of that's kind of right in front of us certainly when it touches bottom start it up again if not before Surprised how um, how much time's gone by without us getting a bite on the pearl barley here. Maybe we should switch one over to maggots. Let's go try our other little hole, our little um, chub hole. See if any chubs are down there. But we have not gotten a bite off since we've had the steel leader on. 
Now that, again, that could be coincidence. I mean, oh, there we go. There we go. That makes me feel better. Got a little perch again. It's a nice one. Spin fishing is up to 3%, and we need it to be to 15% <laughs> to use spoon. So it is a long grind. Uh, again, one thing that some people do that's maybe not a bad idea is just get two basic spinning rigs together and go troll mosquito just to have two rods out and try to increase the frequency of bites and try to get to that uh, percentage you're looking for a little, a little more quickly. But those perch have been good little, good little catches, and we, we can spin fish from down here as well while we're um, testing the chub hole. I like this spot down here because it's right near um, a log that's in the water. You just would imagine that fish would be congregating around that log. And um, we'll start off with pearl barley times two, and then we'll see if we need to switch one of them to maggots or something. We'll see if that helps. But you wanna, in this spot, you wanna get it as close to the branch there as possible without getting snagged, of course. Whoops. All right. We want to be within earshot of our bells, but this tends to be a pretty good place to spin fish. Maybe the most consistent place on the map. It's down here near this fallen log. See if we can get anything down here today. It's not as deep down here as where we were fishing before, so we probably don't need to wait quite as long between rotations. Says it's 1 to 1.5 here. Might be better just to do straight retrieval, to be honest. There we go. Something small on there. Little perch. Baby perch. now on this lure. They're small, but just trying to level up spin fishing. So now our little steel leader is maybe not hurting us too much. I don't know. definitely not the right size it's just all they had we couldn't get anything smaller in the store I 
And once again, slow bite rate on the on the feeders. Unless we're just not hearing it or it's not picking up. Oh, there's something on here. Oh. Is that a roach? Apparently not small bite rate at all, just I didn't hear them or they didn't set off. Just kind of took them straight down the down the river. They just swam south. Right, let's see if we can do anything right here. We can at least see the line a little better. Lesson learned there. Keep your finger off the shift button. It's just not worth it. Try to get it in too fast and it just pops right off, especially if you haven't been, if it hasn't been on long enough to make sure it's good and secure. Well, it happened again there without the shift button, so. Water is just really roachy right now, but it's okay. I mean, get a little XP. Roaches sell for a decent amount here at Winding. There's worse things we could be doing than catching these big common, big common roach. At least the bite rate's seemingly pretty decent. nice that you pretty much get level points up at every on every fish at this level for spin fishing believe me at higher <laughs> when you rank it up some that is not always the case it uh, slows down dramatically So this lure's done pretty good here. It's cause we, we've been catching really small perch for the most part, but uh, it's a little bigger one. But we've gotten good bite rates on, uh, let's see, which one is this? The uh, Dragonfly Original 3006. Um, let's try our little flurry, our little guy.
Okay. So one more little experiment here before we go from this video. I want to check one more thing out. Because I've been gone for a while, I don't know how some of the old spots are doing. So let's test something out. So on my main account, I will often come to winding at the beginning of a, a fishing session and stock up on bait fish. Especially if I know on my main account I'm going to be fishing at quarry. Um, lately I've been doing a lot of experimenting with bait fish. and found that uh, having some success with them. And I think in one of my other videos, even as in this account, we've, we've talked about this spot down here, but it tends to be really good for using telescopic rods, float fishing to get, um, to get a lot of bait fish. And it is this spot right here. So we're going to we're going to go ahead and put our feeders in as well. But then I just want to test the uh, bite rate on the telescopic rod, and we'll probably put um, blood worm on because we did buy some on this account, right? Okay, blood worm. We got a size 20 hook. Let's try about 115. Let's see if that's an okay depth. Yeah, that's not bad. All right, let's see if the... Um, so typically on my main account, yeah, this look, looks good. So this is this is usually my experience on my main account as well. It, it's, it's hard to even um, let it drift down the river before you start getting nibbles on a lot of casts at least. And so what I'll do here on my main account... I'll actually get three float rods out and just put them all in and end up catching a lot of gudgeon, bleak, some roach, some perch, uh, a couple other odds and ends like a dace here and there, that kind of thing. But it's a good spot if you're wanting to level up float fishing, there's a gudgeon. If you're wanting to level up float fishing, I do recommend this spot as one of your options. Especially if you can combo it with, you have the ability to use bait fish, then it's particularly good. But even still, it's one of those, um, the bite rates are so good that uh, it works out, works out well. And for our purposes here, so normally I would even put a smaller hook. Um, but I don't mind catching, I'm, you know, we're not going for bait fish on this account, obviously. I'm nowhere near being able to make or use bait fish. And so, um, I'm going to put our rod down here. Let that drift while we're seeing what we got on pearl barley over here. So again, we're just catching a lot of roach. But that's okay. It's hard to grind out XP on roaches, but it's not the worst option on silver, at least at winding. So many of the roach you catch are going to be markers, much higher percentage of fish. Um, in fact, they've all been markers. So it's sort of a steady flow of, of silver. It adds up. It adds up. Now this spot does slow down in the middle of the night, especially if there aren't many um, rough in the water. I think we've got another bite on that one that feeder but um, if the sun's up this spot is usually really good for float fishing whoa whoa Nelly don't bump me in the red all right let's see what this is it's the big old roach nice that is awesome Finally on some fish here. Do we have something on this one? So weird, we haven't gotten any bite. Whoa! So the fish got on just as we were. That was bizarre. All right, so let's test something out here. Let's put maggots in and see if we get the same results. We probably will. Basically, it seems like 
Roach is just about the only thing in the water right now, but let's 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 double check that. And we have not. It doesn't look like we're going to quite reach our goal of hitting eleven and a half, but we've definitely made the bar move some, and we're up to thirty fish in the net. We're doing better. We probably should just come back to this spot first thing next time. It's a lot more. Um, there's a dace I was talking about. You will catch dace here. And I personally like blood worms. You will almost get the same results with worms or uh, maggots. But for float fishing here, blood worms is my favorite. Because when I'm going for bait fish, the blood worms tend to give you just a better rate of gudgeon. It seems to me. It seems to me. We're at 19.2 on bottom fish. No, what was that? That was on float fishing. Sorry, duh, we're float fishing right now. So 25% is the next, and that's using those, um, what is that? The glow in the dark ones, the luminous. Yeah, it's for night fishing. Take it. Take it. All right, after this, after whatever happens here on this float rod, we'll go ahead and pull them all up and go see if we've made any silver. And we'll wrap this video up. So eventually it gets to the maximum there and then it just kind of sits there and you'll still get bites. Um, it's a little harder, at least for me, to time the, the bites correctly because you've got the current pulling on it as well. So the float does a little different animations than if it's just drifting in the current or sitting there. All right, we'll set it down and we'll start pulling these rods up. Maybe in the meantime, catch something else. All right, so this was on the maggots. Let's see if we also caught roach maggots here. Looks like we did. It usually does not sit there long before getting a bite. Huh. Doesn't look like it's getting a nibble at all though. There we go. Patience paid off. Dace? Or is that a roach? That was a little roach. Okay. Let's go see how we did. The roaches helped, I'll tell you that. All the roaches helped. <laughs> And I guess I still really haven't given the pond area a fair shake during the day. I always end up there at night for some reason. I guess because it's one of the spots that tends to be more reliable for rough. At least here recently. But during the day you would expect to catch tons of gibbles and crucians. And uh, of course roach and perch are in there as well. We were catching some whites, um, but at least as it got later in the, the evening there, the, the bite rate was pretty slow. Let's double check. I don't think we really got cafe orders going, but, well, let's see. What's the roach one? Yeah, small roach. So it doesn't look like we did. Certainly, we did not get a trophy bream today. That would have been nice. We're one off on the gibbles. So just really unlucky on orders today. I mean, just not, the fish weren't, fishing wasn't great this time, but we did get up to 30 silver, which is nice. And if you look at the price, that silver bream is gonna be, it's gonna be the most valuable fish. But then the second most valuable fish is one of our roach. That's the one that was almost a kilo. But like I said, the common roach do add up. 
Um, well, we made more than we spent. It's always good when you make more than you spend. And I guess I feel like I always do this at the end of the video, but what are we going to buy next? We're trying to upgrade our feeder rods. So we're going to go to uh, Asteria, 118 silver. We technically could afford that. And then we need to upgrade to a Lacerti. So 83 silver. And, um, yep. And then we'll be at least be able to handle a little bigger fish. Maybe go for the bream in that one spot overnight. And see if we can catch some more marker bream. Be a good way to do it. All right. As always, thanks for watching. And I uh, hope to see you next time.